While Muslims believe in the revelation that came with these mighty prophets of God, we must distinguish between the original revelations which these prophets came down with and the present-day Bible. The present-day Gospels, known as the Evangels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, are not the same revelations God sent down with the prophet Jesus, peace be upon him. Nor is the Old Testament today the revelation sent with prophet Moses, peace be upon him, in which God commands us to believe. The Holy Quran renders it an obligation to believe in the revelation that came down with Jesus Christ, but it has been lost and is no longer in existence today. The original revelation, known in Arabic as the Injil, meaning glad tidings, or Evangelion in Greek, was God's revelation, whereas what we have now is a Bible that contains a mixture of words from prophets, historians, scholars, and many unknown and random men, including malicious inserts and deletions made throughout time for people's agenda and political and financial gain. Whereas these books may still contain traces of truth, the gospel does not stand in its original revealed form. No divine revelation exists today in its original form as revealed when the prophet lived, except for the Holy Quran. God warns in his final testament, the Holy Quran, So woe to those who write the scripture with their own hands, then say, This is from Allah, to exchange it for a small price. Woe to them for what their hands have written, and woe to them for what they earn. Quran chapter 2, verse 79. The Bible contains commandments, prohibitions, stories, prophecies, words of prophets, rulings, and more. The books of the Bible are divided into the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament is said by Christians to have been received through the prophets before Jesus Christ and starts with the creation of the heavens and earth, our father Adam and mother Eve, and ends just before the birth of Jesus Christ. Christians believe the New Testament to have been written by inspiration after the time of Jesus. It contains references to the birth of Christ, his disciples, prophecies of the last days, the second coming, and information regarding the hereafter. Christian denominations do not agree on what is considered the inspired books of God. Protestants believe that 66 truly inspired books make up the Bible, while Catholics believe in the existence of 73. For many generations, the disciples and first Christians followed neither the 66 books of the Protestants nor the 73 books of the Catholics, as the Church did not officially approve of the present-day books until centuries after the departure of Jesus Christ. This means that many Christians lived without ever knowing the New Testament. No Christian biblical scholar believes that God or Jesus Christ wrote the present-day Gospels, and they all acknowledge that others wrote it after Jesus' departure. The Jews believe that the first five books of the Old Testament were given to the prophet Moses, peace be upon him. But it is evident that today's Old Testament was not given or written by prophet Moses, peace be upon him. One can read in Deuteronomy chapter 34, verses 5 and 6, And Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in Moab, as the Lord had said. He buried him in Moab in the valley opposite Beth Peor. But to this day, no one knows where his grave is. If the prophet Moses, peace be upon him, wrote the Old Testament, how could he have written about his death? The Old Testament was not printed until 1488, and before that, the Old Testament existed only in manuscripts, being added and constantly subtracted such that it now contains thousands of errors. Catholics and Protestants have discovered that even the letters in the New Testament, written and delivered to churches ascribed to Paul, were not all written by him. The writers of these letters never expected them to end up in the Bible. Perhaps they would have been more careful if they knew they would end up in the Bible, since these letters contradict one another. 
Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John did not write the Gospels. Many Christian biblical scholars state that the Gospels' authors are unknown, which is why the Gospels state, for example, Gospel according to Mark, instead of the Gospel by Mark. The reason is that Mark did not write the Gospel of Mark. It was unknown authors who wrote what they claim Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John said. So, yes, the Gospel of Mark was not written by Mark, even though many Christians assume Mark wrote it. Christian scholars admit some of the books in the Bible have unknown authors. So why would Christians attribute those books to God? The Gospel of Matthew was certainly not written by Matthew, nor Jesus Christ. As you can see in Matthew chapter 9, verse 9, As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, he told him, and Matthew got up and followed him. Someone else is talking in the third person, not Matthew or Jesus Christ. Some Christians claim Matthew was writing in the third person, but if this were the case, he would be the first to do so in his time, as it was uncommon. It would not make sense for someone to create an eyewitness testimony in the third person, as it renders the testimony untrustworthy. One would need to use I or we when making an eyewitness testimony and not speak in the third person, which would render it confusing for others. The Bible clearly shows that Matthew and Luke plagiarized from Mark's gospel. In some areas of the Bible, Matthew plagiarized verbatim, meaning word for word. See Isaiah 37 and 2 Kings 19, where each verse is identical but attributed to different authors. In other areas of the Bible, it proves plagiarism with words shuffled around, but it remains very evident that Matthew plagiarized from Mark. Matthew and Luke plagiarized their works about 85% word for word from Mark. Is not Matthew supposed to be a trustworthy eye and ear witness? Matthew, the disciple, would not do such a thing as steal. Unlike the Holy Quran, Christians do not believe the Bible was sent down as a verbal inspiration, so one cannot say that God inspired both to convey the exact wording. Since it was not verbal inspiration, each person would have relayed the message in their own words. The Gospel of Matthew was not written by the disciple Matthew, and Christians need to stop associating the Gospel of Matthew, which was written anonymously, with the disciple Matthew. Plagiarism in the Bible is found here and throughout the text. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were known to be fishermen and tax collectors all first-century Palestinians from Galilee who spoke Aramaic and were illiterate. But they supposedly wrote these manuscripts at a scholarship level of Greek. We have no evidence showing any of them spoke Greek. If they could not even read or write, how could they have written in a language they did not speak? Some Christians believe that evidence traces reports in the Bible to specific authors. But those claims cannot be valid since there stands overwhelming evidence against them. There exists overwhelming evidence that most of the books of the Bible were not written by their assumed authors. None of the New Testament writings that survived had a signature, so we are unsure of the authorship. We have no information regarding the chain of narrators that passed the reports from one person to another, to verify their reliability and trustworthiness, such that we would consider these reports authentic to some degree.